Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm putting my new Verizon 5G home internet to the test. The part number for this gateway is WNCCR200A and my internet plan is 5G Home Plus. In the previous video, I covered setup tips, advanced configuration, and how to get the best 5G and Wi-Fi performance. If you missed it, be sure to check it out first. The link is here as well as in the video description. I also used and tested the older gateway which looked like a cube if you have that gateway you can watch my earlier videos on its setup and testing also linked below now let's dive into the new verizon 5g gateway first up speed test i connected my computer directly with an ethernet cable to the 5g gateway and used speedtest.net to run the speed test this setup eliminates Wi-Fi variables, focusing solely on 5G performance. With the old gateway, I was on the 5G home plan, which was supposed to deliver up to 300 megabits per second. I usually got download speeds in the mid to upper 200s and around 20 megabits per second upload speeds, which matched the plan. However, now I'm on the 5G home plus plan based on what I was told when I ordered the new gateway and the availability of 5G high bands in my area, I should be expecting download speeds up to 1 gigabits per second. Unfortunately, that was never the case. My speeds with the new gateway were surprisingly even slower than the older one, rarely reaching 200 megabits per second, very rarely close to 300 megabits per second, and never more than 300 megabits per second. The same story applies to upload speed, usually around 10 to 15 megabits per second, and rarely close to 20 megabits per second. I even tried every corner and every window of the house and got more or less the same results. For the most part, I kept the gateway where the old one used to be, which based on the test I had done back then, was the best spot in my house. The bottom line is, unfortunately I experienced worse speeds using the new gateway while being on the faster and more expensive plan, which didn't make sense. I talked with their support, but unfortunately that was not very helpful either. So as far as the speed tests go, the results were not good and much worse than I expected. Let's now move on to the ping and jitter test. A ping or latency test measures the time it takes for data to travel from your device to a server and back, indicating the responsiveness of your internet connection. Jitter refers to the variation in ping times, which can affect the stability and consistency of your connection, especially important for activities like online gaming or video conferencing. I ran these tests for the popular DNS servers 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8 for about 5 minutes each. Ping rates less than 20 milliseconds are usually considered great, between 20 and 50 milliseconds is considered good, between 50 and 100 milliseconds is fair, and more than 100 milliseconds is poor. As for jitter, less than 10 milliseconds is considered great, between 10 and 20 milliseconds is good, between 20 and 30 milliseconds is fair fair and more than 30 milliseconds is poor. Now, as you can see, the average ping rates for both servers were more or less similar, 47 and 48 milliseconds, which barely make it into the good category, but are definitely far from being great. The jitter, though, was much worse because both cases were well in the poor category, 80 and 102 milliseconds, which are terrible. These are the results based on my location and my gateway, so it doesn't mean everybody will see these results. However, I ran a similar test around two years ago with my old 5G gateway and when I was on the slower plan. I even ran it for 24 hours and I got much better results back then. I haven't moved, I'm in the same place and the new and old gateways were in the exact same spot, but shockingly with very different results. So I guess it is safe to say that so far, and unfortunately I'm not pleased with the quality of my new Verizon 5G home internet, even though my new plan is more expensive and my new 5G gateway is using better Wi-Fi technology. And even though I install it in exactly the same spot as the previous one, the speed is worse, the ping rates are worse, and the jitter is actually terrible. Now, just to add to the problem, I noticed something weird that I think is definitely worth mentioning. 
thing. When I enable the IP pass through mode, if you have watched the previous video, you know that IP pass through is used when you want to connect your own Wi Fi router to the gateway. As soon as I did that, I realized my security cameras stopped working. To be more precise, they could no longer communicate with the cloud storage where they kept the footage. At first, I thought there was something wrong with the security cameras or maybe a temporary cloud issue, but it took me a while and some troubleshooting to finally realize this happens as soon as I enable the IP pass through. The problem is not my Wi Fi router because as soon as I disable the IP pass through, even though there is double NAT, the cameras start working again. I also have cable internet and everything works fine when I'm connected to the cable modem. It looks like something is being blocked when IP pass through is enabled. As I was wrestling with this issue, I noticed that even though my gateway's firmware seems to be up to date and we are in the second half of 2024, when I log into the gateway, it shows 2023. It looks like they have missed this obvious and simple thing and didn't change it to 2024 for well over six months. Now, this might not be an issue and this is just a simple number and definitely this is not causing my issue however this makes me think if they have missed changing the obvious copyright date is it possible that they might have missed something more serious for example the reason why ip pass through is not working fine for me or how about even more serious stuff like the security how can i be sure something is not missed in the firewall or other security features do you see what i'm trying to say all of this unfortunately makes makes me not want to trust this software, which is responsible for many important things, including providing security for my network, where I do many sensitive things like banking, using social security and such. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it is not secure, but based on what I see and also my experience and the issues with my security cameras when I enable IP pass through, it makes me think twice before letting this software be in charge of the gateway of my network which one of its many responsibilities is securing my network and preventing hackers from getting in. I just cannot trust it, which is unfortunate because I had a very good experience with the older 5G gateway, but a totally opposite experience with the new one. And I'm also paying more. So if I want to summarize my experience with the new Verizon 5G home internet, I would say not satisfied with neither download nor upload speed, not satisfied with the quality of internet that it provides because the ping and jitter rates are not overall good, especially jitter which is terrible, at least in my experience. I'm also not satisfied with the internet issues that happened when I enabled the IP pass through mode, which enabling it is a must for me as I absolutely want to use my own Wi-Fi router which is packed with professional features such as firewall and advanced security features as I don't want to let this gateway be in charge of the security of my network. I'm interested to know your experience if you also have the same gateway. Let me know in the comments below if you have similar issues or if it is just my gateway acting up. I'm sure Verizon would appreciate knowing about any issues so they can fix them. Given my very good experience with the older gateway, I hope this one and future models can be just as reliable. I really don't want to say negative things, but this was my experience and I want to be absolutely honest with you. Hopefully Verizon can and hear us and address any possible issues which would make everybody happy let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comments below nonetheless that was it for this video i hope you found it useful and if you did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos thank you very much and i will see you next time